Hello. In this demonstration, we are going to talk about the new OpenShift Dynamic Console plugin from Portworks that enables or delivers on that single pane of glass management promise uh, to simplify the lives of platform engineers or platform administrators that are responsible for managing your OpenShift infrastructure. The plugin can simply be installed by uh, selecting uh, or, or using a simple radio button from our Portworks operator page. So once you enable that plugin, the Portworks operator goes ahead and installs the pods that are responsible for providing this plugin functionality inside the OpenShift web console. Once the pods have been successfully deployed, you will see a simple message in the web console itself to refresh your browser session so that the new tabs uh, get displayed uh, inside the web console. So once I hit the refresh web console button, uh, we will we should be able to see of the all the different portworks tabs that we have added as part of this dynamic plugin the first one being the portworks widget or portworks tab in the left navigation menu uh, which shows you a cluster dashboard so by navigating to portworks and cluster we give you a higher level overview of the portworks installation that you have on your openshift cluster there are a few different widgets that help you uh, get details about your Portworks storage cluster. The first one being just the cluster details where we show you the amount of available capacity, the amount of utilized capacity in your storage cluster. We show you the different versions that you have running on your OpenShift cluster, give you a quick overview of the license that you have applied on your Portworks storage cluster so you know when to start planning for those license renewals. And then we also give you a list of the different storage and storage lists node so this is a simple hyper converged cluster that i've deployed on openshift so it has three nodes and all three are storage nodes we don't have any storage less nodes in this deployment we also give you a, a volumes table so in this case we have a, a volumes table which lists all the different persistent volumes that have been provisioned on portworks and you can choose to sort these volumes by different namespaces so if you're trying to find a specific volume you can easily navigate to it it gives you additional details about individual volumes such as the status, the capacity that has been configured for each of these persistent volumes, the node that this volume is attached on or running on, and then the number of replicas that are configured for this specific persistent volume. As you know, Portworks allows administrators to completely customize the number of replicas that it stores, and you can get a quick overview of how many replicas exist for a specific volume from this table. In addition to the volumes uh, table, we also have a, a backing drives table. So as you know, Portworks can consume any block device and aggregate those into a unified storage pool. Uh, using this table, you can find out how many backing block devices or drives you have attached to individual OpenShift worker node. You can sort this table by different OpenShift worker nodes. If you have multiple of these drives, you can filter uh, by node as well. And then finally, we have a storage pool table. Again, Portworks allows you to configure different storage pool, which can be backed by different type of media. So you can have you can have an NVMe storage pool, you can have an SSD storage pool, you can have an H a hard drive storage pool, and you can get details about how these pools are configured from this simple table as well. Next. We also have a node summary table. So these are all the different storage nodes that you have on your OpenShift cluster. So these nodes are contributing storage from a Portworks perspective, and you can quickly get, get a, 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 an overview of the different versions of Portworks that you have running. So if you are going through an upgrade, it will show you the different versions of Portworks you have running, uh, N minus one, and eventually everything should be updated to the latest version. And then finally, we have an activities tab uh, or widget, which basically shows you all the different storage specific events uh, and warnings that are occurring on your OpenShift cluster. This is basically a list of all the Kubernetes events that are generated and are relevant from a storage perspective. You can click on individual of these events and get more details about what that event actually uh, is for. You can sort the events by the type of events. So you can sort them by info events or you can sort them by warning or error events. Again, this is just to help accelerate any root cause analysis or troubleshooting exercises that the platform engineers or platform admins might be going through right now. So they don't have to go to a different CLI session. They can continue using the web console. In addition to the cluster dashboard, we have also added two other tabs under the storage section. So if you have a Portworks storage class, 
uh, that is being used to deploy persistent volumes, you can select that storage class. In this case, I'm selecting block dash SC, and you can see that we have a new portworks tab that uh, is displayed here which gives you additional details about that storage class so instead of having to go to the cli and doing an oc describe on a specific sc and then maybe do trying to sort all the different persistent volumes that have been provisioned across different namespaces uh, using that storage class you can just use this simple tab simple portworks tab to get more details about what are the different custom parameters that have been configured and which are the different persistent volumes that have been deployed using this specific storage class you can again sort this table using namespaces so you can identify which uh, volume that you're looking for you can also look at the attached node the status the replicas uh, etc for all the different persistent volumes in addition to the storage class portworks tab we also have added a new portworks tab under the persistent volume claim section so if you have a persistent volume claim that has been provisioned by portworks or that is running on portworks you can navigate to it and you see a new portworks tab this portworks tab gives you additional details about the volume itself so since portworks allows you to enable high availability and replication inside the openshift cluster itself and you can have replication configured it shows you the number of replicas that you have inside your openshift cluster where those replicas are actually spread across so different openshift worker nodes and it also shows you all the different volume consumers so basically these are pods that are using this volume to store or persist data you can look at all the different consumers in this case we are looking at a read write many persistent volume so you have four different uh, OpenShift pods that are trying to write data to this persistent volume. We also show you details around like if it's this is a pod that's managed by a deployment object or a stateful set object, you can easily identify that, that here as well. Now let's look at a different persistent volume, which is a read write once persistent volume. So it will just have a single volume consumer. So in this case, I have a MongoDB persistent volume uh, that is being consumed by the MongoDB pod itself in my Portworks barbecue namespace. And again, it shows me a different level of replication factor that's configured for this volume, a replication factor of three and where those replicas are spread across. So this is how the new OpenShift dynamic plugin from Portworks delivers on the single pane of glass promise and simplifies day two operations for platform engineers and platform administrators. Thank you for watching.